Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. And right away I see that I have a graph going on. Now I gotta be honest with you, this particular question that you're seeing right here um, wouldn't come up in this exact form on the GED. However, they could use any of this language. Um, so I just wanted to give you this problem so you could have a practice with some of the vocabulary that could come up in the line of, in the world of graphing. Uh, so as soon as I start looking at this, these graphs, I need to know what a lot of these words mean. And so um, that's all this problem was about is testing your vocabulary knowledge. So <clears throat> uh, the directions here say match each feature on the coordinate plane with the appropriate term. So a coordinate plane. Um, I hope a lot of you guys have seen that. That's when you get the two number lines crossing each other at a right angle. You get a horizontal number line and a vertical number line crossing and we call that the coordinate plane or sometimes the Cartesian coordinate plane or even just the XY plane. But that's the idea. It's got two number lines now crossing each other um, and it's a plane. Okay, so um, we've just got some language over here. So, uh, number one says we want to find the origin. Okay, the origin. Now, hopefully you guys know that origin, like the word original, means like the starting place. And when you want to think about where your graph starts, it starts where those two number lines cross because they cross right at zero, zero, right there. That's the origin, the point zero, zero, where the two number lines cross. And so that is B, correct answer for number one. Now, as we were saying, the plane is created when t these two number lines cross, um, but these two number lines each have a name. The horizontal number line you see is known as the x-axis, and the vertical axis, the straight up and down one, is known as the y-axis. And so it looks like my x-axis here was labeled i, and my y-axis here was labeled C. Okay. Now, naturally, if you cross these two um, number lines, you're going to end up with four pieces to your graph. This top right hand piece, and top left hand, bottom left, bottom right. Uh, these two number lines split my graph into four pieces. Those pieces are known as quadrants. You always start your quadrants when you start counting. Um, in the top right hand corner, reason why we start here is because this is where everything is positive. X's are positive, Y's are positives, and so that is quadrant one. And I should not have used a number, I should have used a Roman numeral. We more often use a Roman numeral than our regular Arabic numbers. And so that should be quadrant, it looks like I, but I mean one. And so that is A. Okay, and then you always go, uh, counterclockwise around counterclockwise the opposite of a clock so this will be two three and I'm just going around and then I'll end up here in quadrant four for IV is the Roman numeral for four and that's really what I should have had written there so let's see we've got an H over here in quadrant four so this must be letter H great now hopefully you guys know that a point is just a little dot in space, it's no dimensional. So my point was a D, uh, but my line is a one dimensional, it stretches from point to point. So there's that. Um, and so, ooh, is the E, the F, or the G on that line? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna hold off because it's, um, badly labeled on my part that it's hard to tell if the E, the F, or the G is on there. Let's go look at the other two. Next one says x-intercept of the line. Okay, okay. So this might help me narrow it down. So when you say x-intercept, that's of the line, that's where my line crosses the x-axis. So remember our x-axis was our horizontal axis here, and there's my line. So there's the point where my line crosses the x-axis. That's known as the x-intercept. And that's clearly F, so this can't be F here. Okay, um, so similarly, uh, number nine asked me to find the Y-intercept of the line. The Y-intercept of the line is where my line crosses the 
y-axis and you can see where those two cross or intersect that's right there at g g so if it's not f and it's not g that e must be my line okay so there's my answers b i c a h d e f g and hopefully this vocabulary that gets used all the time on the ged um, inside of graphing problems and word problems now makes sense to you if you have any questions about this be sure to drop them in the comments and i'll do my best to clear up any issues you're having